Hey garden friends, my name is Alexa. Welcome to my garden here in Northeast Ohio, Zone 6A. This video is gonna be more of a vlog style, just kind of walk through garden life update, showing you what's going on in the garden and with the chickens and the homestead, and just kind of chatting a little bit. Uh, I have a couple garden chores that I wanna try and knock out this evening, so I'm just gonna take you along with me. We have been having a lot of rain lately. A recent video that I posted was all about the drought that we were having here in Ohio. We went about three and a half to four weeks without any rain and the garden was suffering because everything had just been planted uh, and when you just put things in the ground they need water to get established and it was a little bit concerning because I had tomato plants and peppers and lots of seeds that I have sown all over the garden that um, weren't either coming up or the plants were starting to struggle because we weren't getting rain and so I had to manually water. Um, my water bill was very expensive. I have city water and it was um, like triple the amount that it usually is so that hurt the budget a little bit. Despite mulching and everything else we still had to water but luckily the rain did come. We have been having uh, quite a bit of rain actually since then um, pretty regularly every day or every other day we're having some kind of rain shower um, and they're not lasting all day so we're having good periods of sun mixed in with the rain and it has resulted in tons of growth in the garden um, today is a very cloudy overcast day it's actually kind of like foggy um, misty out here right now and we're due for some more rain this evening so lots and lots of rain which means lots of work for me to do because since things are growing so quickly um, I do have to catch up on my tomato trellising. I have two 40 foot rows of tomatoes. I'm growing 21 different varieties of tomatoes. I have one 40 foot row completely trellised. The other row I haven't started yet and I've got tomato plants that are starting to fall over. They're getting fruits on them and I just feel like a little bit behind and um, already here at the end of June, getting to that time of year where I feel like I can't keep up with it all. And honestly, I've been having a little bit of these feelings, which I get this every year, but why do I do so much? Why do I put so much on myself? Why do I grow so much food? Um, it's too much to keep up with. It's too hard. All of that has been kind of flooding my mind lately. And I get in these moods where I'm like, next year I am not gonna do that much. Next year I'm gonna scale back. Next year I'm just gonna do like easy crops, like just all potatoes everywhere where they don't really require much maintenance. Um, I've kind of been feeling that way and I know why I do this. I love to garden. I love to have our own food from our backyard for the family to eat. Um, all of that's really important to me and, and knowing where my food comes from and knowing how it was grown organically, that's all very important. But there's a lot of work that comes along with it, especially if you are um, working full time. So I work full time corporate job and getting out into my garden that's kind of just every spare moment that I have um, outside of all of the family time and other um, volunteer efforts that I'm a part of so it it's a continuous thing and if you have people that can help you work in your garden spaces that's great um, but you know a lot of the time this is me doing this all on my own I do have some help but usually it's just me out here working on everything and it's a lot to keep up with and I'm I won't sugarcoat it so I've definitely been having those feelings where I'm like I have to do less because I can't keep up with it but at the end of the day I know that even if I didn't really maintain it planting the garden is the most important thing and then the rest will just happen on its own I don't have to have perfectly pruned tomato plants uh, the weeds can take over um, and that would be okay because really at the end of it all the plants are still going to grow, the food is still going to be produced and even if I have an ugly garden um, and a messy looking garden I'm still getting food out of it so that's like reminding myself like that's the whole point of why I'm doing this in the first place. I love to have it look nice, I love a certain aesthetic when it comes to my gardening and my garden design but it's a lot to keep up with so at the end of the day getting the food is what is important. So here are one row of tomato plants and it's kind of hard to tell but I have a string on each one of these tomato plants here 
And this is how I like to support my tomatoes since I do these long rows. I use these T-post and rebar. And, ooh, I just put my hand in a spider web. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's a huge spider web right here. Let's get away from that. And so I tie a string all the way down to the base of the plant down here. And then I just twist the tomato plant up the string as it grows. And this is an easy way for me to keep up with tying my tomatoes up and supporting them. I've done cages and I've done stakes and I've done everything else and I really like the string tie method the most. So I did a video on this um, a few years ago on how to set up this whole system and I recently posted a short on YouTube. I will make sure both of those are linked if you wanna check out how to do this. But this type of tomato trellising really does save me a lot of time to continuously support them after the initial like pruning and getting it set up. So this is the row that I still have to string tie everything. Here's one of my tomato plants, this is a cherry tomato. This is the Sun Gold Select 2 and it is already flopped over. It's got some nice fruits setting here and I'm going to do um, two liters. So I've already gone through and pruned all these tomatoes but it is flopping over so I need to add two strings, one for this liter and one for this liter up and same thing with this one. This one's starting to fall over. The slicing tomatoes, more of like these ones down here, they're still okay, they're standing upright, but as we keep getting more and more rain, things are falling over, like this one. This is a big mama paste tomato, and I accidentally broke a fruit off when I was pruning it. And then I've got this vine growing over here amongst the tomatoes. I'm thinking it might be a morning glory plant because I grew those last year in my garden. I need to move it. Don't really want it growing with the tomatoes. So I have this plant here, which is a weed. I don't know what it is exactly, but I've left it here because it's been acting as a trap crop for my tomatoes. It's just covered in bugs. They're starting to migrate over to my actual tomato plants over here. So what I need to do is apply some diatomaceous earth or neem oil onto these plants and then this one too. I don't know if I'm going to pull this up because this is containing most of them but they're starting to spread. So I need to put something on these to keep whatever this bug, I think it's some kind of aphid, um, from killing my plants. But we've been having so much rain that whatever I were to apply would just wash away. And so I think that's one of those things that you have to decide how you're going to handle things like pests. I could treat these plants today and I could have treated them the first day I saw them, but I knew it was gonna rain and we're gonna have a lot of rain and we're gonna keep having a lot of rain. So I think while I may still try and apply something, it, I'm pr more so just wasting my product um, because we'll have so much rain, it's just gonna wash it away. So I'm gonna leave the trap crop and just keep watch of that to make sure that that trap crop really is containing and feeding most of these pests. I'm hoping that whatever these aphids are, um, they will hurry up and finish their life cycle and move on before it really becomes a problem where they're killing my tomato plants. I haven't seen any signs of um, distress on the tomato plants yet from these insects. So, so far I'm not overly concerned, but I'm just keeping an eye on it and um, when you practice organic gardening, sometimes that's just what you have to do. Just keep an eye on things and see how it's going and let nature just kind of run its course. So 
so here is the first garden beds that I planted this spring and lots of things in here have bolted um, all the kales have gotten really big the onions are getting really big different Chinese cabbages and arugula that's all bolted um, I do like to leave at least one or two plants in the ground to let them set seed and then either I'll just let them naturally reseed in an area or I'll collect the seeds so I can replant them in the future. So I've been trying to think what am I going to put in this space next because a lot of this stuff like I said is at the end of its season and I'm thinking within the next week or two I'm going to start to sow more brassicas for fall planting. Broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, probably some rutabagas and turnips so those kind of root crops. And I want to get those in the ground early to mid-July. I've been really trying to hone in on the perfect timing for starting brassica seedlings for fall crops. And I usually start mid-July in seed starting trays. But I actually have never really tried putting the seeds in the ground. And I think that might be where I have an issue because when I start my seeds in the seed starting trays in the middle of summer, I forget about it because... I've got all of this <laughs> to take care of and it's just another thing to think about. So I'm thinking this year I'm just going to put them directly in the ground in this space and see how it goes. I think it's going to work. Plus with everything that I plan to keep like these kales and like Swiss chard and some of this other stuff all up in here that will shade out any of the little seedlings and hopefully keep them cool and keep them from bolting so we'll see so my circle garden this year i didn't have a really good plan for what i was going to do in here i have sowed sunflower seeds and some okra i have some sweet potato vines growing but they're taking a little bit to get going since it's been pretty cool lately but mostly it's just kind of been consumed with weeds and so one of my tasks I have to do is to get in here and weed out all of those. I don't even know what that plant is, but it has taken over. And I have an idea of what I want to put in there. So a few weeks ago, my friend Beth and I took a girls road trip to Michigan, which it was about a five hour, five hour drive for us um, in Northeast Ohio to get to St. Clair, Michigan. And we went and visited the MI Gardener store. Um, I posted a whole vlog about that, so go ahead and check that out. But I bought these seeds, these jacama, it's either pronounced jacama or jacama, something like that. I bought these seeds while I was at the store, and I think I'm going to put them in that space interplanted with the other things I already have in there. But jacama is a tuber, so it says it's reminiscent of a sweet potato cross with a water chestnut and it is less starchy than a potato, so it's low in carbohydrates, which is a good thing because my husband and I are following the keto diet currently, and so low carb anything is a good thing for our family. And each tuber or root can grow up to five pounds each of these fruits. I am planning on putting that in there, and this is more of a spring and fall crop, so it takes 95 to 130 days to mature. We have about 100 and 10, 100 to 110 days left in my frost free growing season so I think this would actually work out really well. So I'm going to work on pulling out some of these weeds so we can get those jacama seeds in the ground. So this looks much better, all weeded, and what I did leave are zinnias and marigolds, sunflowers, I mean they are everywhere in here so I will have to go back and probably transplant those at some time. 
So one thing with these seeds that I just noticed, um, they are climbing plants, so they like to be trellised. So I'm going to plant them around my obelisk. I did put in some climbing flowers, but only two seeds of those germinated. So like just one side will really have the flowers climbing on it. So I think it'll be cool to have these jacamas and see what those look like trellised. So I'm gonna put like three around each side of the obelisk. You can see where the soil is dark. That's where I planted the jacama seeds. So hopefully those will grow well and up my obelisk. And I planted some up here. So this is my squash bed and my kitty bed. Um, I put some seeds up here too, just to get an idea of like soil differentiation because this is where I had my chicken manure compost pile last year. So this is like really broken down and very good compost in here. So I wanna see like, if these ones do significantly better, I expect them to since this is such rich soil. Hey everyone, it's Lex. So I decided to cut this vlog um, into two parts. So I'm gonna end part one here at this point and stay tuned for part two where I'm going to share with you what's going on with my brassicas, a greenhouse update, some cool things we're doing with mushrooms, sowing more beans along the trellises, an update on how my culantro seed starting is going, and finally a chat about what's been going on with all of my chickens. So I hope you enjoyed the first half of today's vlog. Can't wait to see you on the next one. Make sure to subscribe so you're notified when that is posted. Have a great day, everyone.